people fail because they they try to they try to get cheap. They try to take uh, they don't understand the value. People eat with their eyes first, and so just for example, on a, on Amazon, for example, a lot of people they don't they they don't spend money on their photography. They'll either find some stock photo and pay some guy fifty bucks to Photoshop their product in the model's hands. Or they'll have their buddy down the street that might have a $5,000 camera but doesn't know the first thing about composition or lighting, uh, actually take the pictures, uh, or is not creative. Um, and so I think the number one place that people mess up in e-commerce is not spending money on, on their imagery um, and, and trying to skimp there. Uh, that's a major mistake because, uh, like this old saying, photo, you know, photos worth a thousand words. And if you convey a message, look at some of the best advertising in the world from some of the top fashion brands. You know, they'll run an ad uh, in a magazine. It's just a, a person uh, and a small logo down at the bottom. And sometimes you don't even have to put the logo. You actually know this is Chanel or you know this is, uh, who, uh, you know, Guess or whatever just by the style of it. And so creating that brand imagery and creating that stuff it is takes time and money, but it's extremely powerful. And so I think the number one mistake people make in the e-commerce space is not spending the proper time creating the proper images. They, they know how to take a picture of the product and this is what it looks like, but they don't know how to get that emotional response and how to create what they, what we call lifestyle photos uh, that, that will put the, the viewer who can't touch it or feel it or smell it or taste it in the picture. And, make, and, and so they can see themselves in that picture, can, can imagine themselves in that picture. It's almost like, uh, you know, they're saying the future is going to be this uh, – uh, Time travel, you know, with what, what I'm not time travel, but uh, virtual reality travel where you put on some goggles and you see the whole environment around you and you can say, Take me to the beach. And you take you to the beach uh, in the Caribbean and, and you're just looking through there. You're sitting on the couch in your living room in Brooklyn uh, with taxis going by and all kinds of horns going, but you, you're out of that world. You're in this virtual reality world and you feel like you're actually on the beach. It's changing your perception of your reality. And that's what you got to do in your marketing and your copy. And, and, and your images is you got to change the perception of the reality and put them in the reality of, of using your product or having the experience uh, that your service or product creates. And then people are going to buy. And that's where people miss it a lot. It's not easy to do. Um, it's, it's a skill set that uh, takes some, some thought and some planning. Uh, but that, that's, that's where you can uh, really set yourself apart. The first thing, if we look at pictures, you know, pictures tell a thousand words, as they say. So Amazon permitting you those eight pictures, use the eight pictures that they allow you to do, no matter what type of product that you're, that you're selling. Because if they're allowing you, the person always clicks. You know yourself, every single person has gone online to buy something, whatever it is, no matter how big it is or how small it is. People love clicking through the photographs. And it's, it's just natural consumer behavior. Because they want to find out exactly, does this product fit the solution that I'm looking for? So make sure to use them. My other thing on pictures is don't overuse them. Because start to think about the product that you are selling and the consumer that's going in to buy your product. If it's a very boring item that we always talk about, you don't need to have a lifestyle photograph of something that's really, really boring. They don't need to see it in use every single time. They know what they're looking for. So it's not a surprise whenever they see it in a lifestyle photograph and say, oh, yeah, oh, I understand now because they've been looking for that product already. I would say if you don't have a good image, it's going to kill 80%. I wouldn't even say half. It's going to kill 80, 80, 90% of your conversions. It doesn't matter if it's a, it's the highest quality product on the market. Um, if the PPC is amazing. You're just, you're going to, you're just not going to work. It's not going to work on or off Amazon, Shopify, Amazon, anywhere, bad image, bad conversion. Uh, what, Talking about sticking back to Amazon, the, the, the main image, you're obviously restricted in, in that it, it needs to be on a pristine white background. You're not supposed to have a lot of other graphics or anything like that on the image, even though in some categories you get away with it for a while. Uh, I just do a pristine white background on the products. I play with the temperature of the white. So if I have a white product, I will cool the, the, I'll make the white cooler, or I guess this is not going to sound right, but take it more toward the blue than the red and cooling. It really allows white products for me to, to stand out. Uh, another thing that's important before you get too crazy with images I've learned is to really, you know, grab the top 10, 15, 20 of your product or the closest thing to it on Amazon and see what your competitors are doing. 
Uh, some of them, especially if they've been there a while, they've, they've already gone through these lumps and they've learned from it. So you'd be remiss not to incorporate that. Uh, that, that and then the main image also I like to put, I, I don't really speak photo, but it's, I like to put the, the, the reflective bottom or the mirror effect on the product to give it that depth to where it feels like you can reach it since you're not actually looking at it on a shelf. Uh, that's done amazing for, for main image. And then the, the other stuff, the, the other images, you know, you, you, I think it's critical to have your lifestyle images, your annotations, your call outs, your comparison charts and video when you can. So if you're selling wine glasses in summer, um, you want to make sure that you've, your first image, you know, has a wine glass with pims and lemonade with some fruit in there or something, because, you know, that might be the most common drink that people use with that specific glass or wine glass that you're actually setting. When it comes to, um, you know, the, the Christmas holiday season, you might want to do mulled wine instead because maybe that's what people use it for during the Christmas period. And it might work a lot better because it might get a lot of more emotional buy-in from the customer to actually go ahead and purchase that product because they're always visualizing uh, how they're going to use the product themselves. And when they can visually see the product that they're going to, the thing that they're going to use it for, um, they're more likely to go ahead and buy the product. So I think it's really, if you can, if it is relevant for the season or the holiday or whatever it is that's going on, then yeah, I would say do it. I don't think it would impact conversions in a negative way. I think it would only impact conversions in a positive way. If you don't change it, that's, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, but if you have the time and the resources to do something like that, then I uh, would strongly advise to do it. Is one of the few ways to differentiate yourself is just having nice photos. And it is one of the ways you can compete against like some of like the Chinese sellers who are selling for the lowest price possible. Usually they have very poor photography. And so like it's a one way to make yourself look like the quality normal brand opposed to this like cheap knockoff brand. Um, what if it's just like the same, you know, they sell a bag and you sell a bag. Like how, what do you do with your photos to, to push that sale forward? infographics um you can do lifestyle photos you can do those types of things that really kind of like make it look that much more legitimate opposed to say like a plastic bag that just clear and you can't really take too many angles from it i we've been in those situations before where it's like nope there is no more angles to this pen it's just this or this and it's like at that point yeah then you just got to get into lifestyle ones or infographics having amazing pictures from different angles and really explain the product well when I launched my e-commerce business back then, and this was in the early 2000s, none of my competitors had good pictures. And it was, uh, you know, I, I, I knew my competitors now outsold them by, by, by a few multiples in terms of revenue. And this was because of having just having an amazing service and having great pictures. So Amazon tells you you need a white background. So we have white background, that's fine, but they also... Like, I don't remember the exact thing, but like your product has to take maybe 80% of the space and like you can't have text, you can have, but we usually still put like icons, for example, um, let's say that we put some benefits at the bottom, like three icons. And so the reason we do that, even though it's technically you shouldn't is because nothing really happens. And the worst, like the worst thing that happened is Amazon changes your picture to the second one and then you just change it back and that's fine so there's no like there's some things this is like gray hat and there's some like, i don't don't do any stuff black hat but like this to me is is worth it so much and there's like not no real downside to doing that because if every image for example as a um uh, onion, like I, I've used the onion peeler, but because I've looked at like onion peeler images, and there's like there's one that are very bland, like the, the colors are not beautiful, and then and they're all using, for example, onions, and then the other one is using red onions in their listing, and that's that's just being a little bit more creative. Just red onions make it stand more, stand out more. And so just doing stuff that stand out. And don't be too much like too afraid of 
oh, like if you don't respect the exact guideline for those images, obviously you don't want to write like, uh, some people write like bestseller on their images. And so I wouldn't do that because like this is just trying to, um, you're just being dishonest. Like yeah. if you were the bestseller, you would have the bestseller bad for your images. So don't do things like to be dishonest, but like if you are one thing I spoke with, Diane Borsler, a uh, few weeks ago, she's a copywriting expert. And she, she, she told me a tip that she uses because she helps people a lot with their uh, supplements listing. And let's say you have a package. So you put the package on your listing. And she said, uh, try to quote her, but like people, you can't write text on that image, on the main image, but you can write text on your, uh, on your package. So like put your benefits on the package and the package is on the image. So this way you, you're you still white at, like this way you're doing nothing wrong and you still get to put your benefits in the image. Uh, but like we do a little bit differently because the package for us doesn't make sense to put on the image. So we like put uh, small text or just like images or uh, dif dif depending on the country, uh, in Europe we put the flag. Uh, it, there's, there's a reason we don't just put the flag because of the country. It's the, because of the layout and it's like a layout specific to France and we're going to put the flag of France and then it just stands out and people like, like seeing the flag. So my background is in marketing. I actually have a degree in marketing from Texas A&M University. When I was a younger guy, I was named one of the top 40 marketers under 40 by Direct Marketing Magazine. My background uh, before this whole e-commerce and before this whole internet selling is actually was actually direct mail. And so I've been doing that for uh, close to uh, 40 years or so. And direct mail is the old school way of where you, you're, you're making sales through the postal service or it's uh, via the phone or television uh, ads that people call. It's very similar today with in e-commerce, and, and the trick that a lot of people don't realize is it's one-to-one -one selling. It's a very intimate relationship uh, because people can't touch, they can't feel, they can't smell, uh, they can't taste the product. So you have to c create the environment, paint the picture for them, uh, and if they don't, if they don't know your product, they never experienced it, they never heard of it, they never seen it in one of the other mediums. You got to accomplish that to, in your marketing, and that's <clears throat> that's where the trick comes in uh, when when you're marketing. So to get the word out, if you if you have a brand new product and you're trying to sell it, whether it's on your Shopify site or on Amazon or anywhere else, you've got to create uh, visuals that that convey the product. It's not just turn the product uh, to the left and to the right and what's it look like on the top and the bottom, but you got to put people in the picture. You got to show <clears throat> how is this product going to benefit me? How is it going to change my life? How is it going to improve or solve a problem? And you need to demonstrate that through imagery and through copy, uh, through creative copy and through creative imagery. Uh, including what's called lifestyle photos. Lifestyle photos would be where it's basically you can picture yourself in, in that role. And so if, you're, if your product is a, a, a vitamin C serum for women over 50, you're going to need a woman over 50 that's relatable to the audience that you're targeting, that's happy, that's smiling, that's maybe showing a before and the after of using your product, uh, or it's so how it's improved her life, or before she stayed at home and just – read the newspaper and now she's out playing cards with her friends or, or whatever it may be. So that's part of that's part of the marketing and part of overcoming marketing. As far as places and, and, and channels to do that, there's there's a plethora of them. Uh, I mean Amazon's a great place because they already have all the built in traffic. So if you're able to you, you have already people going to it there looking for certain keywords, looking for certain things. If you're able to step in front of these people and convince them with a really good marketing, with really good imagery and copy and a fair price, uh, then you can capture a share of that. The first thing is um, the most important thing for your listing optimization, I would actually say is images. And the reason is because when I mentioned that there's two parts to increasing sales which is driving more traffic and increasing conversion. The photos is actually the one part that overlaps that in conjunction with your title. Because if somebody sees your ad pop up or your listing organically pop up, the photo is 90% of the time what causes them to click. So that's gonna cause them to click on the listing. So that increases traffic right there. And then at the same time, when they're on the listing and they see the rest of the images, using things like infographics, so a really simple infographic that highlights the benefits and the features of the product that maybe shows them how to use it. So we, I recommend if you have a product that is, requires any assembly or use or unboxing, you can do an infographic that shows them exactly how to assemble the product, exactly how to use it. 
your main images on Amazon listings depending on the season. So uh, I'm mean, talking image. about the main one. Uh, the main image we don't change unless we'll unless we do a split test and we don't feel like the main images is resonating. If we see that our rank is declining because new competitors have come on board or other competitors have changed their main images and don't feel like ours is as competitive, but it's rare that we would change the main image. Um, it's more the lifestyle images that are also in the listing. So for example, if we have a home item that could be used in the fall, um, during the winter time, during the spring, during the summer, we'll change out those photos so that if it's October, you're not seeing a photo of springtime. So we make sure that our listings are always updated and relevant to the time of year because if a customer is searching for an item in October, they're not going to want to see an item that looks like it's spring and it's gardening. If we're outside of season, there's no frame. If we're getting into a, you know, depending on the country, you know, predominantly Christian Christmas holiday, then we do add in like the red and green hues or like a little wreath or something around the borders. Um, Halloween will add the purples and oranges and browns. And it, it's, we, we test them between just like a glow and an actual thing like a wreath or a vine if it's Halloween. Uh, we do that around the borders. I call them frames. Okay. That is still on the first image, right? That no. This is all the secondary images. The, the first image, we could get away with it if we put some Halloween or Christmas stuff, but we're fortunately like one of the top three usually in, in, in all of our dominant keywords, top five at least. And I'm not trying to give my competitors some ammunition to go, temporarily suppress my product it, would it work if i wasn't in the top five i would do it i would try to get away with it on my main image but if you're already in the top five anything you do against terms of service you're going to have you know half a dozen people reporting you uh but if you're just selling on your own shopify site or on on uh, on amazon uh, a couple thousand dollars for imagery for a, a new product is is reasonable uh and you can you can do a lot with that we have uh, uh, several services for sellers. Um, you can check out amazingfreedom.com. One of those is an image service. Um, one of the key differences between our, our image service is that it's not photography. Um, so you give us, um, you give us a couple uh, of images of your product from a few different angles, and then we have a graphic design team that will then take those images, add in stock photos with models, add in text, um, and yeah, there's a lot you could do with it. So some ideas that I can give you are, one, create a promo image. For example, create an image with, um, let's say you have multiple products for your brand, or let's say you just have a couple of products. Um, so I create an image that showcases all the brand's products. I create a, a coupon code that um, on the image itself will say, buy any two of you know XYZ brand products and save 15%, use code, whatever. Um, create a custom promo code. Don't just accept the... Um, um, garbage of mixed up letters that Amazon gives you in a code. So if your brand name is XYZ brand, create, you know, XYZ 10 off as a coupon code or 15 off as a coupon code, something that's easy to remember. You could put that on an image. Um, you could take another image. Um, again, this may be gray area. I'm not sure if it's against TOS, TOS or not. So use it at your own risk. But I use an image where we show uh, a picture of the product on the left side. And like we take a few reviews that are five stars and we put the text of those few reviews we, we take like the image of those reviews and text and put it on, a, on an image. Um, so what you're doing with this is, you know, people, people will tend to go through your images, you know, on a product, but they don't necessarily read everything. So you're able to show them things that they would have otherwise missed, like your best reviews, like a promotional offer, um, things like that. So definitely, if you're not utilizing these strategies, we can create images for you or, you know, you can use your own graphic designer to create these kind of images for your listing. Um, they take lifestyle photos w with their products. They, you know, because you need that in addition to the the product photograph that you need on any given marketplace that you're on. You also need lifestyle lifestyle photos w with people using your items so that people can actually see them, you know, as they might experience them. The very first thing a person has to do is have a proper listing, and I, I call it Brady Bunch, the Brady Bunch effect. And if you can't take your product image or title and surround it with the competitors and somebody pick yours or yours and the top competitor the most, then you've got to go and rethink your listing. So 
Once you do that with your primary image and once you do that with your title, um, you could do also do it with your bullets, but those are the two primaries. Then you can move on. I mean, infographics, like I said, can be anything of highlighting a feature or benefit or use of the product, right? What it's used for, how it's used. Um, it can also feature technical aspects um, of the product. So maybe the length and width, the dimensions, you know, whatever the volume of the product is, that's helpful technical information. Um, you can also highlight, like I said, assembly instructions or use instructions. So we had a company, um, the product required some assembly and we did four product shots and we added text to say, here's how you assemble this. And it was very simple, very easy to demonstrate. So that way when they got the product, they weren't having to go through a manual or try to figure it out it wasn't complicated. They'd already seen how to assemble it on the listing. So in, infographics can be incredibly powerful for almost any product. I mean, even, even a hand towel has benefits and features and, you know, how you should wash it, you know, how you should dry it, things that are going to help keep it, you know, stored in, in long-term condition. There's little things that are going to be beneficial and helpful. And those are going to help you stand out from the rest of the crowd, from the rest of the, the product. So it's always helpful to look at what the best sellers are doing in your category take them as inspiration. I do not recommend mimicking them line for line. You know, you need to find a way to, that your product brings unique value. So get inspiration from the best sellers. Look at what they're doing and, oh, that's cool. We could maybe do something like that. Or, oh, I think they're doing this. We can actually do this better. Um, the last part in terms of images is what I call enhanced lifestyle images. So people using the product, in some cases, it's not even using the product. It's conveying the lifestyle of the people who will use the product. So maybe you have a granola bar that's high protein and is great for people who are out on bike rides. Show bikers out on the, on the road. They don't have to have the product in their hand. What you're doing is you're tapping into the emotional side of your audience going, wow, I, I bike, this could be a great product for me to take on my bike rides, right? And then the enhanced part is adding some text to those lifestyle images to provide additional information. Again, people hate reading. That's just sort of de facto people hate reading. So if you can give them a little bit of text in the image, their eyes are going to be drawn to the image and then you educate them using those enhanced lifestyle graphics. So, and, and I'll preface that with Amazon terms of service say that you shouldn't have any text on your photos. We have found that when we add some text, because most people are shopping on mobile, they're not able to see the bullet points. So when they're just looking at the picture, we can show the picture and add information about, let's say it's a card. We can add arrows that show the size of the card and have someone hold it, which better shows them what the scale is. Or we can have, um, what's another good example? We can show a product and to show the size, we'll show the product with um, if it's a storage container with a bunch of different items in it to show how much it fits. And then we'll add to the side, this has been FDA approved, it's dishwater safe, it's microwave safe. So those are things that are listed in the bullet points. Um, but we also add them to the photo, knowing that if you're looking at it on mobile, you're never going to see that unless it's in the photo. There's one that uh, comes to mind is um, um, re removing removing toe warts <laughs> that is just what i just saw so you know it okay so how's the it's a two-step process okay so first infographic is you know taking it out creating um putting putting it onto a nail so it shows taking it out of the box putting a drip showing it on the toe and then okay wait 30 seconds that's number four step number fifth step is use the second one get a warm bowl stick your feet in um once they're done um put the the, the, the stuff on and then dry so there's like seven steps and I thought, oh if you could do an infographic on something so unsexy and just kind of make it fun i i thought that was kind of cool um it, it just think of anything that has a step one, two, three, four, five. So in training, um, all right, do this, then this, then this. And it, the, the infographic apps, so if you typed in infographic app, there's probably a ton. I do know, um, like at the time we're talking, 
that AppSumo has a, had a graph uh, infographic um, uh, app on sale for 49 bucks. And I, I, the name slips my mind, but I know it was on sale um, just recently. And then I believe that companies like um, maybe Canva might have a, an area that you can just add your infographic. They'll have samples of them. So when I said that um, on-page optimization is important, um, we must not forget about social proof. Uh, and you know, if you follow, for example, Ezra Firestone and a few other guys, um, and you, if you check their sites and all the successful sites, and uh, the trick they're using is, um, I think Ezra has like a huge banner under almost every product of selfies of normal people with the product. Okay, and it's not like it's not proper lighting, it's not beautiful pictures of models, it's basically normal customers uh, with bad lighting, just using you know their phones and taking a selfie with the product. And, and I believe that, um, that social proof is definitely very important for, for um, uh, conversion rates. Uh, so how do we get that, right? So I went through the process of doing the draws and you know send me your selfie and win our product or send me your selfie and you win fifty dollar you know card for Amazon whatever and um, and I had you know inserts about that in my product I had I had written on my packaging and basically did it all properly and the percentages of people doing that were like tiny 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 and I would consider myself a good copywriter so. Um, this is a good tip in general. So if somebody tells you that tip, you're like, eh, let's do it. And then all the work that you've done, all the printing that you've created, and you get like tiny percentages of people sending you a selfie, it kind of makes it um, lose that, that, that concept. So then what I simply do is I pay people for that. I simply offer people $2 for a selfie if they're happy with the product. So first we make sure they're happy with the product. And I say, hey, you know, you want to make some money, here's $2 for a selfie. And, you know, it's, a, it's bland, it's kind of, you know, hardcore, but hey, it's $2, right? So if you were to go on Fiverr to get that selfie, and that's what people do, and that, you know, it's not the real customer, but again, it's okay, that's $5, right? Here, it's $2, and I get like 10 times more selfies than I used to do with the elaborate you know ways of getting those selfies so simply sometimes you just ask those people and give them money and they will give you a selfie i would use them in um a, on the product pages uh, on shopify um i'm not sure you can do that on on amazon uh, although i've seen i think picture number five that was just a collage of people but i'm sure that's that's um legal in terms of whatever uh, but I definitely use that on um, product pages on Shopify and so you get a selfie for each product so there you could mix them up and you know um, basically a collage of people um, using your product well having your product in their hands um, because I think it's super important that models are good but real people are better